I'm Sister Helen, Helen Tabea, and I belong to the Missionary Congregation of the Evangelizing Sisters of Mary. I work as a volunteer with the Jesuit Refugee Service in Kampala. We work with the urban refugees, mostly here in Kampala. And I am the education coordinator. At the same time, I'm an instructor. We have at our center at JRS Kampala, we have um, a number of activities that we run. One of it is like the English class. We, we call it language for integration. So I teach, I teach English for two hours in the morning and in the afternoon for two hours. We have 245 students from different countries who come to our center to learn English. So I involve myself in giving lessons to these learners. But most of my work is to coordinate the different activities connected with education. I work with the urban refugees. Uh, they are those refugees who do not desire to live in the settlements, in the camps, and because of insecurity problems, because of their own maybe feeling insecure, they come in the urban area and they found them, themselves stranded somehow, not knowing what to do next. Uh, they come here in our center uh, a number of times. Mm. First, for the basic needs. And under these basic needs, GRS Kampala gives them rent, uh, medical, the food, uh, for mothers like maternity kit, clothing. If we keep refugees that they have where to stay, we feed them, we give them whatever they need, but there is no education. And then we are building, we are making them, you know, we are making them to become handicapped. They will not know what to do for themselves in the future. And let's say when they get back to their country, which kind of country do they want to have from war to peace? They will take peace back home and they will be able to educate other people. it comes to the side of education, they, they settle here in Kampala, but their children do not go to school. Children need to be in school to be with others. So we have a um, child care center for children age four to six here at JRS, which I coordinate. The usual curriculum goes to three years but as JRS, we limit it to two years. When a child uh, reaches six years, we try our best to try to fix this kid to a primary school. And when we take them to primary school during these two years period, the children are able to, to read, to write, to communicate in English. And when we take them for interview, they pass quite well and they, they accepted in the school, and we follow them up. Eventually, that is not the end. When they complete primary, what next? And we thought of helping them at least to reach to secondary school. They, they sit for the Uganda National Examination here, they pass, then eventually they are admitted in senior one, secondary school, up to senior four, that's what we call the, um, the O level, the ordinary level in Uganda. And some of them emerge the best in the country. And that makes us very happy. Eventually they still come back, say, what next? And you look at a child, a brilliant child, who could continue the studies. But sometimes we are stuck, we have no answer for them. Then we'll say, hold on. And with time, when we get a donor, when we get some little money, we send them to A level, the advanced level. That is senior five and senior six. Still, they perform quite well. And as per now I'm talking, we have about 14 in, in the university. 
um, the urban refugees, just like those in the resettlement, I think they do not have so much. They may not think about the education of their children, but what they look at is what to eat, where to sleep, and if they're at peace. Education is quite expensive. And so that's how JRS came in to assist children that their future may be bright, that they may have something to do in their life. Personally, I would say education is very, very important, not only for migrants, for everyone. Uh, we are more concerned about the migrants because they are like lost people. They, 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 their future is dark. If children are not taken to school, what will be their future at this present millennium? That there is somebody who does not know how to read, how to write, you know, how to sign, fill a paper, and so on. It's like you are in a world that does not exist. So for me, uh, I love to see uh, migrants go to school. First of all, they are tortured psychologically. They are, their minds are tortured. They are in a different environment. They, they have no hope. But taking them to school is like giving them a new hope, a new light. It's like showing them a new road. And socialization with the other children brings hope to children, happiness. And you could see this even with the youngest of four, five years when they are here together, how you know, they make it so merry, excited. And they could come to you and show you how they can write how they can read. And when you ask them at their young age, what do you want to do? What do you want me? I'll be a teacher. I'll be a teacher like teacher Maria, their teacher, of course. Another one says, I will be a doctor. I'll be an engineer. I will grow, I will study and help my parents and make the world better. So small words from children makes me so happy. And if they are kept at home, could they think that they have something that they can do for the world in future. It can help so, so much because when we share ideas, we share our vision, our mission with the other partners, they also come in to support us. And the aim is helping a migrant and making a life of a migrant better and making a migrant happy. So in that way, when we have a network, I learn from the other uh, organization, they also learn in the process of sharing and we can come uh, to have a common aim and a common task to accomplish. And th this is what is actually going on here because they sent children to us, school age going, and at the same time, we also send people for psychosocial for other activities too. So for me, it's, it's great to support one another and to see the dream of each organization come through. Which kind of children will we have if they don't study? Which kind of mind are we building? The fact that they are, they are uh, let's say, they are migrants, it doesn't limit them to be like another person. They have to be like any of us, that what we wish for our family or our children is what we could also wish for them. And that's why personally I struggle that I see them in school, that they have what other children have, and that they have dreams. As an education coordinator, um, I'm so passionate about education of migrants, not only migrants, but all the needy. So um, I'm advocating to those who can support, who can help a child go to school. 
a migrant or a poor child, that support is more than what you can spend on a candy. Um, I'm greatly concerned also about the countries that welcome refugees. How much do they put in the education? Or we only give them a land and where to be comfortable and forget about the education, the future of the, of the migrants. So I'm advocating for that, that we join hands together all over the world, that migrants all over the world get education, live at peace, they are helped psychologically, morally, intellectually, and all aspects. That's my wish. Thank you.